Hey hippies, welcome, welcome, welcome back. It's Courtney Shavante here. I'm back with another banging resin tutorial for you guys. So today I am super excited because the molds that we're going to be working with is my Afro Locked Mermaid tray. And I'm super excited. As you can see, I want you guys to be able to see like all the details of her. You know, she has her locks, she has her crown, she has her tail fin, like she got the little seashell bra and everything. And she is absolutely fabulous. Um, there are so many different ways that you can go with this, but I wanted to do something new today that I don't really do too often on here. And I actually paint it directly onto the mold using mica powders and chrome powders and stuff like that. And I'm just really excited about the turnout and everything. And yeah, so if this is your vibe and stuff, make sure you do hit that subscribe button for me and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I do put out for you hippies moving forward. And let's just go ahead and get right on started whipping her on up, okay? hippie so we're going to start out with the clean mold of course and then we're going to prep about 15 to 20 milliliters of resin and just go ahead and pour that directly into your rim and what we're going to do next is just kind of take that stir stick and we're going to use it to release any bubbles that may have formed and get trapped inside those little corners and stuff like that feel free to also get a toothpick for any smaller bubbles and for those tinier crevices as well so that way you can make sure you have a more nice polished and finished look when it's time to demold your full resin piece next we're going to take these crushed shells that i have here these are authentic seashells and they have this really cute really really adorable like iridescent finish on them so it's kind of like an opal look and i can't wait for you guys to see it like in the show off video at the end and everything so make sure you do stay tuned so that we can see exactly how these do turn out but basically what I'm doing here is I am just, you know, adding a little bit more resin as I go if needed. And I'm moving those shells around in the rim so that way I can make sure that they're all distributed throughout the entire rim. And there's not like a lot of blank spaces or anything like that. Um, don't be afraid to use the toothpick too. And if you do need to pick a piece up... But a piece up and just kind of move it somewhere else you know feel free to do that as well um, just make sure you try to get it done before the resin starts to cure on you mine did just because you know I was working on a different project before this as well so my resin did start getting a little bit tacky on me but I was still able to make sure that I had all the shells completely covered and submerged in that resin for that first layer and then you just gonna spray your alcohol and everything and then give that layer some time to cure Once that rim is completely cured, what you're going to do is now go ahead and wipe your mold surface clean. This part is very important because after manipulating all the little pieces and everything, I'm sure there's like, you know, some like little drippings that's gone onto the surface of the mold. And you also want to make sure that it's a nice clean surface for this particular step because we are going to be painting using paint brushes. Um, our chrome powders, our hollow powders, and also some mica powder on here as well. So I really want you guys to see how this turns out. I'm starting with the tiniest brush that I have and I'm going to start in the crown area just because I like to kind of clean each color up as I go too. So that way it just kind of makes it easier for me to keep the colors from blending and all of that good stuff. So um, the gold is going to be used just for the crown. So I'm going to make sure that I have that area filled out using this tiny little brush here. I even zoomed in for you guys so that way you can see it a little bit better, especially on these etchings. Um, I do try to to make sure my molds are more of a translucent color and everything so that way you can use UV resin with them at any step that you are within your you know resin project and everything so if you have something that you want to put into the rim and you want to maybe use UV resin for the rim or something like that you will be able to using my molds so make sure you do check out my Etsy shop so that way you know you can go grab you one 
but what I'm also doing is I'm filling in her little hair pieces because on each of her little locks she does have um like these little gold pieces like um some gold jewelry on her locks so I'm just filling those in as too I'm making them the same color as the crown um and yeah that's pretty much what i'm going to be doing with each color i'm just going to be switching up the colors as i go but i do want to make sure that i have a nice like little layer of the chrome powder on there um because you don't want it to get to the point where the color isn't being picked up by the resin so do look out for that now as far as the clean out what i'm doing to get all of the fallout i'm just using some alcohol and a cotton swab and i'm getting into those little tiny areas and crevices and stuff and making sure that i get all the excess out next i'm coming in with my mica powder and i got a slightly bigger brush because the areas that i'm working with are going to be a bit larger and this is just going to be for her body i'm using this really really beautiful copper color that i got inside of a set i just bought a set of um like 24 mica powders and this is the copper colored one that i have and they usually have it in pretty much every set so you know definitely check yours out if you're interested in recreating this look um i already have have all these items linked in my Amazon storefront and they're usually linked in my um, captions below as well so don't be afraid to you know kind of sift through that and everything so that way you can make sure that you have the products and stuff if you are interested in them but yeah I'm just going to go ahead and continue on like kind of doing what I was telling you guys before um, after I continue with each um, color I clean up after that color before I move on to the next so I'm just going to let you guys watch me do that and I will catch you on the next step.
all right so now we got everything cleaned up and looking nice that did take me like a full hour to get everything filled in so you know i sped it up for you guys of course but i just wanted you guys to know that before you go tackle this because i made it look really fast and it's not <laughs> as fast as um it looks but um now what i'm doing is i'm just went ahead and prepped about 50 milliliters of resin and i'm coloring it using some mica powder this is a white mica powder that i have and then i'm going to add in some drops of this white opaque alcohol ink because i don't want this layer to be see-through at all so i'm mixing up that um alcohol ink very very well into this resin so i can make sure i have this like really milky but shimmery opaque white color and that's really what i'm going for next i'm just taking this glitter mix that i have here um this right here is my midnight seas glitter mix i only have one more left in my shop and it's not going to be coming back so make sure you do check it out if you are interested and yeah i hope you're that one <laughs> All right, but what I'm doing now is I just went ahead and poured out about half of the resin after I mixed that glitter in into my mold. And then I'm taking my heat gun because I want to make sure that I push this resin into each crack and crevice. I don't want any bubbles having a chance to form around those etchings and everything. And I don't want to disturb the mica powders either. So go ahead and pour the remaining once you finish with that, of course. And then you're just going to allow this some time to cure after you spray that alcohol all right it's time for the fun part this is the part where you go ahead and bend your silicone mold never the resin remember that and then from there it'll pop out nice and easily for you once you go ahead and release all the edges and everything and then all the drippings that you do have on the side you can peel those off very very easily this is what it looks like before we add any paint, but you know, that's the very next step. I start by putting the acrylic paint directly onto the actual tray and I just use a regular paintbrush and I make sure that I push the acrylic paint into those etchings very, very well. So that way I can make sure that the um, outline is beautiful and all her hair and everything is going to look really, really nice and really, really dark. So you just want to, you know, make sure that you have a nice, even layer. You want to make sure you didn't miss any parts. Don't worry about those smooth parts because the paint does wipe off very, very easily, which I'll be showing you after this dries. Now that that paint is dry, we're just going to spray that alcohol and use a damp rag. You want the rag to be damp enough to where, you know, it has some moisture to it, but it doesn't leave a moisture trail because then it'll be a little too wet and it'll start like dragging off paint from the etchings and you don't want that. All right, so what you're gonna do is just kind of focus your area, your um, cloth onto those smooth areas and just try to wipe off that excess paint Try not to rub too hard. It's not necessary to rub super hard in order to get it off. And like I said, I don't want you guys removing the paint off of the etchings or anything like that. However, since these etchings are slightly larger than some etchings in some other trays, what you may need to do is go ahead and get back in there with another coat of paint. This time you won't have to go all over. You'll just get into those little areas like you kind of see in her hair where I kind of wipe too hard. No biggie. I'm just going to kind of do that off camera and get that taken care of. As you can see, sis is good to go. I got her hair filled back in and I went ahead and prepped um, about 20 milliliters of resin. I'm pouring about 10 milliliters onto the surface and everything. And then I'm just going to kind of drag that all around and making sure that I have these etchings secure, pushing it all across, trying to make sure there aren't any bubbles that are forming either. Because since this is going to be our doming layer that seals everything in, it's also going to be our top layer that makes everything shiny and just is like kind of our finishing coat and stuff like that so you do want to make sure that it's as even as you can possibly get it so I do suggest making sure that you are working on a level surface of course once you do you know have everything kind of where you want it and you feel like you have enough resin on there to 
create an even layer I want you to take your heat gun and just kind of thin the resin out further making sure that it's getting deep into those etchings releasing all the bubbles and if you see any dense form or anything like that you can add in a couple more drops of resin to prevent any denting and then you're just going to let this cure 24 hours hippies Ta-da! Here is our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful and gorgeous mermaid tray. Guys, I am so obsessed with this tray. Like, look at her. I love how she is just glimmering in the sun. I hope you can see like the effects on her tail and everything. We have the pink chrome powder that's given us that rainbow. We have the chameleon tail like that's also given us like that purple and green shift like her crown also has like a gold hollow shift too so that also gives us some like little rainbow effects i am so obsessed like i love the locks on here they also look like they also look like braids so you know if you are a braid wearer that's fine too but look at how these seashells that are in the rim and everything as well like look at how they just really glimmer in the sun you're really able to see it here and i think they just look absolutely beautiful especially with this glitter mix that you know i made and everything i feel like everything is just really complimenting each other you know y'all know i love to toot my own horn over here like this is a nice little side shot so that way you can see like you know kind of what it looks like from the side I hope that you guys are really loving this tray as much as I am. If you are, make sure that, you know, you go ahead and give me a like and a comment below. You know, I love hearing from you hippies. I try my best to answer all your questions and everything. And, oh, let's get a quick back shot. Okay, okay. All right. But yeah, like, like I said, interact with me. I love hearing from you. And until next time, mwah. catch you later.